So this is a, a little bit of an experimental talk. Um, the idea is that it is more of a workshop type of things, uh, but uh, I'm just going to take a few minutes to give a general uh, gist of what the collaboration monster, and in particular the AI collaboration monster, might be. Um, it's kind of like a work in progress uh, and like this is a synthesis of many discussions that uh, uh, have been done in the past few months towards like the trying to manifest a collaboration monster in the field of AI. Um, so essentially the, the idea um, is uh, we want to find ways to overcome Moloch uh, in the age of AI. Um, which, in other words, is uh, can we actually create a, a strong uh, structure which doesn't need to be like an institutionalized structure, but like something that coalesce uh, in order to create something that could compete with uh, the actors that today are the dominant uh, players. And so the um, the collaboration monster is, so the, the general idea is can we actually create like some interdependent network uh, of entities that share similar values and uh, that are eager to engage into some kind of uh, um, collaboration and synergy, etc. in the field of AI with a view to um, facilitate the development of a project that are more open, more collaborative, uh, and yet competitive with the existing market players. And so, uh, first, uh, what we've done was identifying what are those value-aligned um, principles, because basically, like, um, there is perhaps it's more interesting to find people that are already aligned with those principles and try to coalesce together rather than trying to convince people that those principles are the right principles. Um, so this is kind of like a preliminary attempt at trying to nail down what are specific principles that are actually a good discernment mechanism so that people that do agree with those principles probably will be very aligned in how to move forward with this collaboration monster. Uh, those that do not agree with any or one of those principles perhaps they are, not, they are not meant to be part of this particular type of collaboration monster. So the three principles, um, one is collaboration as a competitive advantage, uh, meaning that today, especially in the, in the AI field, there is a lot of small actors that are trying to make it, trying to spike in, uh, which is very challenging, and uh, um, because they have to compete with very large players. And so collaboration, can enable people to cluster together and perhaps acquire a competitive advantage. The second is openness as a precondition for trusted infrastructure. Um, basically, especially in the field of AI, there is like a lot of discussion about like how can we trust uh, AI, uh, how can we create more trustworthy ecosystem, etc. Uh, and so here the idea is that we are not afraid of open source, even despite uh, some claims that open sourcing AI might actually lead to dangerous general uh, intelligence. Uh, here the belief is that if this is the case, probably we want to make sure that we can see how they work uh, rather than having them in the hand of, of some corporations that are not releasing any information about them. And then the last, um, which is perhaps, um, I think the three of them are kind of controversial, like, but that's the point, it's like not everyone might agree with us. Um, and the third one is interdependency as a pathway towards sovereignty. And again, this means that um, if we want to actually have sovereign systems in, in, in AI or, or beyond, um, we might actually need to give up a little bit of uh, full autonomy and actually recognize this, the value of interdependence in order to create a stronger network. Uh, so that the, ultimately the system is actually a sovereign system as opposed to being dependent on the API of a proprietary system. So those are the three principles. Uh, again, to be discussed. Uh, this is like a small synthesis, um, but maybe we can improve them. And then, and then what's the overall idea? Um, so the idea is like how can we create the, the 
most lean and simple entity uh, that actually has this catalyzing and gravitational force uh, around this group of entity. And so we don't want to create like a large foundation or multi international organizations, etc. Um, the idea is that we want to really find like the, 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 the simplest thing that we can rely upon to actually have a legal tool that can help us um, enforce those, those principles. And so the idea then is like just to rely on a label. Uh, alien intelligence is just like a funny uh, pun, but maybe we can find a more interesting name. Uh, but anyway, so finding a label, and this label, essentially, that's all there needs to be. It's like that, a trademark, uh, which is owned by a particular entity, which probably needs to be like some kind of non-profit foundation or whatever. Something that is, or like, it's something whose mission is anchored around this, and that cannot be deviated. Uh, and then the label is just a label, but it comes along with a chapter. And... Uh, um, and the charter is basically the stipulating the conditions by which it is legitimate to use the label. Um, so this was done, this model has already been adopted by, by a few entities, so the French tech in, in France, which is also like a label for, people, for municipalities to be able to use the French tech, and they just have to abide by like a long series of conditions that ensure that they are actually promoting the French tech. Uh, the FabLab network uh, uses a similar model where you have like you have like the little FabLab trademark, um, and every FabLab around the world that wants to use the FabLab trademark needs to abide by all the um, prescriptive condition of the charter. And there needs there needs to be it's a permissionless in some way. But if you're actually using the logo and not abiding by the by the rules, then the logo the trademark owner can sue for trademark infringement. So it's a very lean. Uh, legal mechanism, but that has some power because, of course, IP is a, a powerful tool to enforce specific conditions. So, um, so that's really like the baseline. And then, of course, the real challenge, which is, uh, in addition to everything I'm talking about, like what I would love to really workshop uh, together today, is like what will be the specific condition that needs to be integrated into the charter so that these Label actually has some interesting value for the ecosystem. Um, so it is. Um, so anyway, um, the charter we need to invent it. Um, right now, it's a, it's a blank blank page with one exception, and I'm very happy that uh, Michelle Bowens is here because you're gonna recognize when it comes in something. So there is only one clause that we have been brainstorming a lot about, like what is the clause that is really like distinctive that everyone that joins this label should abide by, and this that will reinforce this concept of interdependence, collaboration, uh, and openness. And so um, basically, it's about IP licensing, and the idea then is that uh, everyone can do whatever they want with their technology. Uh, however, for every technology that is um, AI-related and made available to the public, so if you're developing a technology in your backyard, uh, or if it's like not yet ready to be public, no problem. But at the moment in which it is made available, either for free or for a payment, uh, then you have to apply, you have to co comply with this with this condition, which is. Um, Basically, that all all this technology needs to be released to the member of the network under a specific license, which is the copy fair license. Uh, so it's not the traditional copyleft, full open source system in which everyone can use at the condition of making derivative under the same condition. The copy fair is something that actually we've been working like I think ten years ago or longer with Michelle. Um, which always, I was a bit abandoned, but now I think it actually starts making a lot of sense. Um, especially because if we look today at the way in which uh, a lot of the AI companies start to release their uh, software, they mostly do it under those kind of like weird dual licenses, where either by releasing one average model on fully open source and then maintaining proprietary another model, 
are using those non-commercial licenses, which are um, which are specialized on specific actors. Right? So if I make more than one million dollar, I need to pay to use the, the system. If I make less than one million dollar, I don't. Um, so the idea with the copy file was kind of driven around this, which is we want to be able to um, give something for free to people that are still small and growing. But of course, if they succeed because of the use of the technology, then we can ask that they give back some form of royalty payment, etc. So it's kind of an, a conditional non-commercial license, which is free to use for the small people or non-profit people or commoners, uh, and that is actually pay for uh, for the large um, capitalist uh, corporations. So um, so that's what that's, that's the that's the I think that's the most uh, interesting and contentious point of the charter, and that's actually the only one. Um, but the, the underlying idea behind this is that by doing this, you're actually creating this, this ecosystem in which people are more likely to collaborate with one another inside the network. And so the network, all the people that join this network because of the label, they actually can benefit from each other's technology, and so they, you create an actual internal ecosystem that is like a virtuous ecosystem without losing the possibility, of course, of getting returns if any of the insider becomes extremely successful, but also of continuing to charge uh, to the people that don't join the charter, therefore incentivizing more people to join, potentially. So, um, so yeah, this is something that I would love to discuss to hear uh, whether it makes sense. I think other things that could be included into the um, into the, the charter is, of course, like all the question about AI alignment and so forth, um, which is already done a little bit with like the open rail um, AI licenses, um, but could be included also in the charter. And again, this is a way of today we have companies that are doing commitments of like we gonna respect those al alignment principles. But this is just like a commitment from the company, and the company at any point in time can change the commitment. Whereas here, because of the trademark infringement uh, penalty, you actually, once you join the network, you become bound by whatever alignment principle has been put into it. Um, and so again, uh, I think it would be super interesting uh, to discuss and to brainstorm what other, what, does, this, does this make sense to you, first of all, and what other type of clauses would make sense to include into the charter. Um, okay, and then, yeah, then there's also, of course, the, the most challenging question of all that we didn't really address, which is the governance. So once there is this trademark associated with some charter, who and when and how can the condition of the charter be changed? Uh, who from the network participant can have a say on what is the, the amendment principles around this charter, because obviously it will need to be amended as the uh, ecosystem evolves. And so um, this is a little overview of what, what it might look like. Um, and so we have the label, uh, which the logo, associated with a charter which has the alignment principle, ethical principle, IP clauses, and so forth. Uh, potentially, it could come also in addition to like copyright type of IP. It could also come with like a patent pool. So, with the obligation that if you have like patents in AI, which is not as popular as it could be, but probably will become more popular as, as we go, uh, that those patents also need to be released under a patent pool, which was similar condition, which is like a patent pool with a copyleft clause. So you, you ensure that all the people that are, that are abiding by the charter and therefore are part of the network can also benefit from a uh, defensive patent license with your patent pool. And then another really interesting thing that could happen is also data rights. So one beyond the technology, which is obviously very important, uh, and the models, the access to the model and so forth, there's also like the training data, uh, which is kind of like the new the new secret source for uh, a lot of those AI systems. And so the idea is also like if this label actually is associated with a good charter and if there is some kind of trust uh, and recognition and legitimacy around this network that is created, 
then we can actually enable, so today there is a, a lot of initiatives that are emerging for people to opt out to their data being used for training generative AI. Um, for many good reasons, because you know, people believe that this is uh, profiting only and exclusively those large corporations. Uh, but so here, the idea will be then we can also offer a possibility, like within those similar initiatives, that people can opt out as a general rule, but they can also conditionally opt in to a specific category of actors, but inst instead of mentioning here are the actors that we are licensing the right to do data mining, we can just say, well, actually, because we trust the alien intelligence or whatever the name of the consortium will be, then we are opting out by default, but we're opting in for the people that abide by those principles uh, because we trust them to be ethical, to be aligned, and to be open, then they can actually data mine my data because I'm happy to contribute to this, which then becomes a further incentive for more people to want to actually join uh, the charter. And then, uh, and then compute infrastructure. So this is like perhaps more challenging, but also this is one of the big challenges that we need to address, which is today there is, uh, there is difficulty to access the compute infrastructure. And so uh, the idea here is that this network can also become a facilitator to access compute infrastructure, either because the participant can, so again, this is like, do we want to add this into the clause of the charter? Uh, so either because people that do have extra compute uh, are under uh, obligation to mutualize it, so to give access to the non-used infrastructure, uh, perhaps, of course, in exchange of a payment, but like give priority access to the people that are part of the network, potentially like collectively deciding to gather resources together in order to make a bulk purchase of uh, um, of uh, computing resources are, of course, like there is all those initiatives that are emerging about decentralized compute. Um, and so actually using the network in order to create like a federated system of GPUs that can become accessible to all the other members of the network. So this is like a little bit more challenging from a technical perspective, but I think it could be an interesting thing to explore as well. Um, and so this is like, uh, so all this, this is done with like the, lean structure of the logo and the charter. And then this is like a se separate chapter, which is, so that's great, now we are like, we have a nice network of people collaborating with one another, but that doesn't really make it a monster, that just makes it a collaborative ecosystem. And so how do we make it a monster? Uh, we need to make something that is also capable to eat uh, the outside world, um, which means that if we are uh, interacting in a capitalistic environment, we also need to give the collaboration monster capitalistic opportunities. And so the idea here is at the same time as the, uh, the charter with the logo, owner, foundation, non-profit, etc. is being instantiated, uh, something else can be instantiated, which is not, so the number one, the first, the first part is mandatory, it's like the charter, everyone that wants to use the logo has to do that. This is not mandatory, this is more like a, a desirable uh, feature, which is some people can opt in, but in order to opt in into this, you need to be part of the, of the charter first, uh, can opt in to join those kind of uh, um, more corporate structure, uh, which is basically could be an investment club, could be an incubator, etc. And basically the condition of course is that uh, so this means that company, the company, the, or the company, the actors that are part of the network can choose to pull resources together to build some kind of investment club. But uh, the only way in which anyone will actually receive that money is that they also have to join the network. So the investment club will only invest into companies that themselves respect the charter and therefore become part of the network which can also become an interesting uh, investment opportunity because investing in a company that is alone in like a broad ecosystem uh, might actually have less chance to succeed than investing in a company that actually become part of this synergetic ecosystem. Um, and then potentially also, so not just investing in existing uh, entities, but potentially also pulling resources together to spawn new companies or new projects that, the, that also will be by definition, uh, respecting the, the rules and so immediately benefit from the technological pool, from the IP pool, and from the network uh, that exists. 
And, and yeah, the idea here is also because we want to actually really play the collaboration monster. Uh, all those things, when, when investment goes or when incubation goes in one direction, it also goes in the other direction, meaning that we don't want to replicate this kind of Y combinator, y combinator type of thing in which you have like a large company that is just like owning equity of a lot of small people. But also every time you invest into someone or if you incubate a company, that company also gets a share of that structure. So that there is this kind of like interweaving happening in which the, you, have, you really want the company to succeed, but the, the company also wants the whole system to succeed. And there is this kind of like share exchange that is happening, even to, of course, at different, uh, at different um, heights. But the idea is to also create this kind of more mutualistic approach to the corporate uh, endeavor so that all those things are actually interwoven together because they all own each, each other's shares. Uh, so basically, because, because all the companies that are incubated, for instance, own some shares of the corporate structure, which owns a little bit of shares from everyone, then eventually it's difficult to compete because my competitors actually I indirectly own shares in all, all the other uh, members of the network. So this creates, again, a more, uh, a more collaborative, not fully, fully collaborative because, of course, there is still competition, but it's increasing the, the chance that companies that are part of the network will rather create synergistic opportunity and compete with the one outside together through uh, this larger structure. So another really uh, important thing in the AI, but I think in general, uh, is like finding talent. And, uh, and in fact, today in the, in the AI world, it's, uh, um, there is a lot of people that are working for those like large corporations and are getting like a lot of money for it, but maybe they are not at all aligned with the with the value. But you know, it's like that's a very good salary. Um, so the idea is also to create. Uh, this is like very experimental. So let's brainstorm about this. But I'm just dumping everything and then we discuss. Um, the idea is then: can we actually create a system in which we can actually gather together talents independently that are like not necessarily institutionalized, that are not like maybe someone today is working for OpenAI, maybe they don't love the approach of OpenAI, but they love the salary. Uh, can we actually provide through this type of collaboration monster structure uh, some kind of like block funding uh, for AI researchers or like for talents in, in this space that is just like we fund you to do research in under the condition that, of course, this research will benefit everyone in the network. Potentially retroactive funding, so we commit that if people identify specific solutions or, um, or novel, uh, novel things, then we're going to provide retroactive funding to them. But basically, like creating an infrastructure in which we can uh, attract talent but not, not any one of those companies might actually attract this talent, but collectively they can actually attract the talent because they all will benefit from the results that those people will actually work on. And so mutualizing also the human, uh, the human resources. And then this is the funniest one, I think. The Human Alignment Union. Uh, not everyone loves the name, but it doesn't matter. Um, so the Human Alignment Union is about giving back power to the humans. And uh, basically, the idea is that to create a union, and uh, uh, today most unions are actually oriented towards protecting uh, maybe like the most precarious workers so that they can, they can strike if they don't like what the company is doing. And then we can support them whilst they strike. Um, the idea with the Human Alignment Union is to do the same thing, but not only for the most precarious worker, but actually for the top talent as well. Um, and basically using the humans um, in order to actually leverage and ensure that those principles that are in the charter are respected, but also maybe within the network, but also outside the network. So all of a sudden, if I'm an open AI worker, um, maybe I'm still, I'm still tempted to go to the, to the talent pool, but I haven't done it yet. But I, I joined the union anyways. And uh, as I joined the Human Alignment Union, and if an open AI or a student is like, or Mistral, or a student is like, oh, we're going to go closed source. Uh, but the, the, the workers are not so happy about it. Then all the, if the, all the top workers of Mistral 
we have to strike all of Sudan, and I know that the human alignment union is going to cover for their high salary, um, then they actually can make pressure. And I mean, we have seen it with OpenAI, where uh, like the, the people from the company actually um, striked in order to actually get Sam Altman to remain as the CEO. So this, this is something that has happened without the union. Uh, but can we actually create a union in order to actually further incentivize that people stand up for their own principle? knowing that they are protected um, through this type of union. And, uh, ah, and this is uh, um, obtuse language. Um, so this is um, the, um, how can we actually provide uh, incentives and rewards for the people and the companies and the various actors that are collaborating in the network. Um, and uh, so I perceived uh, basically creating a system by which uh, some foundations or companies or actors are providing like a pool of a funding pool uh, but they don't know where to assign it yet and, uh, and then using a system with like hypersurf and hyperboard and we can discuss more the technical detail of that um, so that when, when either a, an individual or an entity is actually contributing positive impact to the larger uh, collaborative and open AI ecosystem, uh, then they can benefit from a portion of the funds that were allocated for this purpose. Have a more uh, collective workshop.